دایی یه فرصت خوب حالا پشت مدافع خدا داد عزیزی توی دروازه گل گل برای ایران خدا داد عزیزی پاس هم روی زمین گشت سرداراز بود به توی دروازه سرداراز بود گل به نام آزمون به برای ایران چند تا گزینه پاس داره بهتی تاروی پشت محبت های جریمه تاروی پاس برای سردار گل گل برای ایران سردار آزمون در وزه بحرین رو باز میکنه ایران یک بحرین سف دقیقه پنجا و چهار سردار آزمون حالا منامه پای تخت خوشحالی ماست در سراسر جهان یک بر سف تو پو دور میکنه سردار به خوبی کاشت حالا مهدی تاره می دیریم قشنگ پاس عالی برای سردار سردار برای برای گل دوم سردار آزمون گل گل برای ایران سردار آزمون دقیقه 61 دو بر سف دو گل از سردار دو پاس گل از مهدی و حالا ایران که داره قدرتش رو به رخ می کشه چقدر راحت توپا می گیره ترابی احمد نوراللهی پاس برای تارمی تارمی داخل محبت گل گل سفوم مهدی امشب بدون گل زدن از این ورزشگاه نمیره بیرون سه هیچ برای ایران Welcome back to a new Gobazan podcast. My name is Ari Alaverdi. Today I'm joined by Pejman Pars and for the first time uh, Arya Fagri. Lads, how are you both doing? Doing well, man. Thanks for Hi, Arya. And uh, hi, Arya, number two. Let's get it on. Glad to have you on, Arya. Hopefully we can speak about today today's topic, which is going to be on the Iran versus Bahrain game. The match finished 3-0 to Iran scored by Osmond two times and Tarami assists by Tarami two times and Nurullahi and just very quickly I just want to say very big thanks to everyone who came on the Twitter spaces again um, and if you are listening to us on YouTube make sure you subscribe to the channel also some very quick news to to give you the Iran women's national team they played for the first time in a long time against Belarus they unfortunately lost the game six goals to nil but Mariam Irandus the head coach I'm sure will be looking to bounce back and uh, come back with some, uh, some victories in the coming months finally the Iran futsal national team are now in the World Cup group it will be in mid-September in Lithuania with USA Argentina and Serbia so look forward to seeing them play Pejman I want to come to you first obviously Bahrain they beat us last time this time around we beat them much more substantial scoreline what was your thoughts on the lineup and the game itself i was negatively surprised by the lineup uh, because in my opinion we didn't have a solid midfield uh, those three in the middle nurulai hoj safi and amiri and none of them are like uh, like a natural link between the defense and the offense a player like Said Ezotoloi is. Uh, Nuroloi, he, he's not that kind of character that can hold up, hold a team, you know, to be that uh, safe and sound heart in the middle. Uh, and uh, we could see that in the first half that Iran's midfield were, was non-existing. Uh, there were a lot of troubles. I have nothing against benching Jahan Bakhsh because uh, his first game against uh, Hong Kong wasn't nothing to you know to impress anybody, uh, but benching Saeed Atalay, who had a decent game against Hong Kong, and he, he's like, to be honest, the only one good enough to be in that position, you know. Now that we don't have Umid Ebrahimi there, uh, benching him was a mistake, and I think Skocic realized that, and uh, letting Mirad Mohamadi play as a natural left instead of Vahid Amiri. Is a, is a sound choice because uh, Amiri, I think he can do more, more be, be more useful in the attacks. But I have to praise him because uh, every time he's in the squad, I'm like, why is he in the squad? You know, we have better players. Every time he starts, I'm like, why is he starting? But he keeps he keeps uh, uh, proving me wrong. I'm really impressed by, by his hard work. And in these, you know, kind of ugly games, kind of like, like dirty boxing, kind of games uh he stands out and he he does a 
really good job. So it's a shame that he's injured, but uh, for the next game. But on the other hand, we have good substitutes in the second yeah. half, which we saw, and I think we we'll can talk about that soon. Yeah, I mean, as you said, Vaidya Miri is going to miss out on the Cambodia game for sure. We're not 100% sure if he's going to miss the Iraq game. He might be back for it. Uh, however, Scottish has brought in uh, Milad Salak and I think Kamal Kamiabinia actually got injured like last week, so he's left the camp already. And Arif Kolami from Estrella is coming to replace him. Arya, I want to come to you next. Give me your thoughts on the lineup first, and your just your impressions of the of the the improvement from the Hong Kong game, especially in the second half. Yeah, the uh, the lineup initially when I saw it before the game started, I uh, I told myself that I prefer this lineup more than the lineup that we had for Hong Kong, and it's more so the positioning of each player. The uh, I know this isn't going to be a common opinion, but uh. I enjoyed having Ehsan Hajsefi in the uh, starting lineup. Now, I know he hasn't scored since 2016. He isn't the best passer. He isn't the best uh, kicker on corners. But uh, the man does have uh, 114 caps. Uh, it's that experience at the captain position that I'm glad Skocic realized for this game. Uh, and he implemented that. And he played the whole game, I believe, which I thought was a, was a good idea. Now on the defense, uh, that was where I thought was the most uh, accurate lineup. They had uh, Mohammadi Khalizadeh uh, Kanani and Moharami. Uh, uh, pretty similar to the first game besides uh, Mohammadi starting this game, which I thought was a good idea. He adds that uh, strength and that quickness, especially when he wants to uh, conduct crosses. Uh, so I like that move. But overall... The first half with this lineup was, I mean, they had the chances, especially with that first pass to uh, Tarami and Sardar when they were in the uh, penalty box, which uh, it seemed like there was some confusion there. But the uh, second half, when uh, Skocic made that really quick substitution for Mohammadi, he brought in Kodus. Uh, I think that's when the engine started to run and the uh, the offense just looked quicker. The offense looked quicker and they looked more together. They look they look like the team that we were used to, especially in that uh, 2018 World Cup and the 2019 Asian Cup. Uh, and yeah. it was uh, history from there. They, uh, they took off and it was uh, <laughs> one of the more fun Iran games to watch in a long time. Yeah. I, I, you did mention about Hai Safi. Uh, I think it's very important that we speak about him. Uh, because first and foremost, there were a lot of pauses in, in this game, and we'll come on to the positive things. But I don't know. This is just my opinion. I personally don't think Hoysev had a good game. If I'm being honest with you, I I think that even though he has, and I don't know the if you agree with me, even though he has 114 caps for the national team, he, he doesn't play like it. I mean, how many times did he have a, a free kick or a corner? <laughs> Damn. Uh, he, no, but like it's true. Like how many times did he have a free kick and a corner, and he he hit sent to the, the the wall, like. Do you know what I mean? Ultimately, I don't feel like he plays like a captain. For me, there are a lot more leaders in this team that have played less games and they, they play at a much, much higher tempo. Look at Vahid Amiri. Look at the effort that he gives for 90 minutes, even though he got yeah. an injury. You know, I don't I don't think that Haisafi gives you that effort, in my opinion. And then, you know, you look at players like Koli Zadeh, who is a pretty good set-piece taker. But then why is Hoysafi taking free kicks? Like I've said, said on previous podcasts, why does he take the free kicks when there's a guy who is clearly better than him, clearly more successful with them? The only reason why he does it is because he's the captain. So I don't think he's a good captain from, from in that sense. He's not he's not identifying the strengths in the team. But then, you know, ultimately, um, we have to give props to Scottish because he made the right changes at the right time. For me, it, you know, go do has to be starting for the national team no doubt about it i think you know if, if you're if you're a fan of nurlahi or of all the midfields that we have you cannot deny that godus has much much higher quality than all these players there's no doubt about it we all know that and there's only one player that in my opinion in my eyes anyway that can replace the quality of ashwan dejaga and that is someone would lose. And you saw that in the second half. You know, 45 minutes, all he had to do was change the game. And he did that single-handedly. 
you know, yes, Osmo and Tarmi scored the goals and they got the, the finishing touches, but I do believe Samo Godus was the key to that, to unlocking the defence. And, and it's also the key to allowing Walid Zadeh to have more freedom. A lot of the time when you have players like Hai Safi and Nur Lahi who maybe labour the team a little bit, the players who really want this space don't get the space that they want, whereas I think Godus gives you that. Uh, so it was brilliant to see. His lovely football in the second half really was. I really enjoyed it. Like I actually enjoyed watching the second half. And on top of everything, we scored three fantastic goals. But before I come to you, Pejmon, I, I really quickly want to hear from Mehdi Tarami. Because before the game, Mehdi Tarami gave a motivational speech to his teammates. <laughs> So we heard that lovely speech from Tarami. Um, he scored a goal, got two assists. Pejman, what did you think of his performance, the goals that were scored by Osmond and Tarami? Well, it was like a textbook goal from both of them. Uh, we've seen a lot of goals like that in Russia and Portugal from Osmond and Tarami this season and also the last season, um, which proves that when you have that confidence that those guys have at the moment and you're you're so in good shape, 10 out of those 10 uh, uh, opportunities will be goals, especially against like maybe a bit weaker teams like Bahrain, although defensively they weren't, you know, that bad. Uh, and what's interesting is uh, the connection that Osmoon and Tarami have with each other is, is so solid. It's so... It looks so easy for them when they have their their one and twos, and when they when they see as soon as one of them gets the ball, they instantly know where that other uh, player is, and that other player instantly knows in what spaces to run and how to do it. And we could see that in the game, especially in the second half. Uh, and we know for a fact, and we heard it from a lot of other players uh, during like also the World Cup and in all the trainings, they were like. Mehdi and uh, Sardar, they only pass each other. I mean, that, that's like annoying. But look at the results from that, especially now in, in these games where Iran really needs to, to score and really needs to win to, to qualify for the, for the next stage. Uh, I'm happy that the uh, Iranians uh, were actually who managed to score some goals that wasn't on, on free kicks and corners and set pieces, which was Kader's specialty. And uh, we need to score more goals like this. And we need to have trust in uh, Tarami and Osmoon's abilities to, to create these things basically on their own and with some help of what is other yeah. than other players, of course. And Ardi, I want to ask you, uh, obviously, uh, we're speaking about the goals still. And we know, you know the first goal was, an ass- was actually an assist by Tarami. The second goal was also an assist by Tarami. And the last goal wasn't assessed by Nur Lahi. Now, I, I really want to know your opinion on the the play b- before that. You know, you know, the, 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 for the second goal, Godos was heavily involved. For the third goal, Torabi was heavily involved. What's your kind of thoughts on that? What, why, you know, do, do you see a lot of improvements in, in, in the team as a whole? Yeah, I think the word that describes what led to those goals were aggressiveness. I think stealing, I, I remember for the third goal, uh, Mehdi Torabi, who was a substitute in this game, really aggressively stole the ball from the Bahraini defender, uh, led it to Nurullahi, who led it to Tarami for the easy goal. It was just that drive that they had in this game. They, they, they really looked like they wanted it in this game. Uh, you could tell by the way they fought for the ball. You could tell by the way they really strive to get into scoring opportunities. When we think about it, Bahrain, they didn't have, I can't remember any memorable scoring opportunities that they had besides that one loose ball in the penalty box. On the offensive and defensive end, it was that drive they had. It was that will that they had. And they they really looked like they wanted, as I said. I think that's what led to the crisp passes by Mehdi Tarami on the first two goals to lead Sardar to the ball trusting in his ability to outrun the Bahraini defender and finishing it off after that. 
uh, not once but twice he did that. Uh, that's a special connection between those two uh, offensive players. We've seen it uh, for the last six, seven years, and I'm glad that uh, it's still something that's happening. Uh, so overall, I think it was that aggressiveness, that drive, and just the trust in their teammates. This is a team that's been together for a good amount of time with some additions, some subtractions, but uh, I'm glad that they trusted each other for this game, and that led to uh, three not easy but very strategized and unlucky goals. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. I think Tony Mino has known, listen, as I've said it before, I'll say it again, I think they are two of the best strikers, not only for Iran, but probably in the world. You know, if you're going to go off, you know, the top five leagues, top Ten leagues. <laughs> easy no. cowboy. No, easy honestly, cowboy. I mean, how many, how many, how many times do you see a guy score an overhead kick in the in the <laughs> in the quarterfinal of Champions League? You know, you know, you have to, you have to put Tarami up there. I, I think Tarami has has proven. I think Osmond has absolutely proven proven himself. Um, you know, as one of the best, definitely in Russia. And he's he's gonna. I think if he moves in the summer, you know, we would love to see him go to a bigger league and and, and show what he's made of. Um, now. I want to take the focus off um, the strikers a little bit and we'll be back into the midfield. The player who didn't start this game was Ezatullahi, a player that we interviewed not long ago, a player that we ha- actually all really admire, a guy who's been part of the national team since the Carlos Queiroz era. Why did he not start this game, Pejman? Uh, why, why, why do you think the reason for that is? And and in the second half, we saw when he came on how, how effective he was in keeping the ball. And do you think he needs to start against Iraq? 100% yes. Uh, because, uh, as I said earlier, we just saw in the first half that uh, Iran, without a solid defensive midfielder, uh, had a lot of problems to to taking care of the, the ball, to to make sure that there's a there's a link between the defense and the offense, and Ezatoloi is is that guy. Uh, so yeah, I think he should start against Iraq for sure. Yeah, and I want to add something um, on that as well. I think Ezatoloi really, uh, if you look at the squad, he is the only natural defensive midfielder there. You know, there's no there's no. I mean, I, I don't consider Ahmad Nurullah a defensive midfielder. For for me, he's not. For me, he's more of a box to box player, and he does well. In the in the attacking part of the game, defensively, there's question marks on on Ahmad Nurulai. For me, as a Tolai is the guy, and I do want to see him start. It's a big shame that we won't have Amiri for for the game. If if he's back, I'll be very very happy. Um, the last point I want to make uh, very quickly is on the two centre backs. Um, before we move on, for me, Kanani had a had a pretty bad game. I've got to say, especially in the first half, is his horrible foul got yellow card. You know, he shouldn't be getting a yellow card in a game as as important as this. And back in the Hong Kong game, he was the one who he didn't close the cross down for the goal. He's had two pretty suspect games, Kanani, and you know, I think very fairly we sh- we we should be criticising because we know how strong our defence was under Carlos Queiroz, and we want to see that more often. Prady Ganji is back. You know, he was suspended for the first game. Now he's back. In my opinion, he should be starting. Prady Ganji. Uh, Arya, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, when I look at the uh, list of defenders, uh, I agree with you. The um, After Kanani, uh, I think compared to the rest of the defenders, with all respect, is uh, Prady Ganji, who fits the role the best. I mean, he's by far the most experienced. We know how... Uh, good of a header he is, especially on corners, uh, and he has good ball movement as well. Once that ball is in his hands as a defender, he knows the right time to clear it, he knows who to pass it to, and uh, he's a simple player. He doesn't try to do anything spectacular or anything uh, too off the charts. He scored a few times in the past, so Compared to defenders like um, Arif Ekwalami or other defenders that we have on the team, definitely by far, I think uh, Pura Liganji is the uh, yeah. man on the on the defensive position who should probably be starting in the uh, Cambodia game as an experiment. And then Scotches can choose the uh, best one he thinks for uh, the Iraq game. Yeah, uh, no, I totally agree. 
Pedro, I'll come to you next. When we speak about the national team, we our most important thing is how do we play? How do we play all together? You know, not just one player at a time. In this game, you know, I should I should probably should have asked it earlier. They, they play like a almost a four four two diamond. Uh, sometimes you, you you'd see Corey's they move out wide, mainly a diamond, right? So. What's your opinions on that? Do you think we should continue the diamond, a narrow formation, where we allow the fullbacks to get forward? Or do you think we should go to a 4-3-3, where we maybe put Taremi out wide? What is your actual thoughts on the whole formation talk that everyone's been kind of going on about for the past week? That's a tough one. Uh, and the thing is, uh, I'll keep saying this about formations. At the end of the day, it's just numbers. Um, it's I think it's more important that the players feel confident in the type of formation that the the coach give gives you. And if they we could see in the game against Bahrain that four three three that we were talking about the three midfielders uh, were non existing or at least let me let me say that. I don't know what their job was, but whatever they were supposed to do, uh, Bahrain could easily overrun them and come to Iran's uh, goal pretty easy uh, without any any worries for, for the midfield wasn't really active. So does that mean that I don't like 4-3-3? No. It means that the players that played in the 4-3-3 wasn't able to take care of that uh, system. So maybe uh, we could s- switch back to the Four, two, three, one. That we have had uh, like a long time during Kerish time, uh, or maybe a four, four, two. You know, I think against Cambodia could be a good time to maybe uh, have some experiments because we're playing against such a low quality team that we're we're afford to do some some mistakes and not get punished for it. Uh, so that would be a good chance for Scottish to to really yeah. try something that he can that the players can accept and learn and do something good about it against Iraq. Yeah, I mean I will say one thing about Scottish that I've been quite impressed by. Um he is able to adapt within matches, which is really good. That's a good sign that I've and I I never criticize him as a coach. I never say he's a bad coach. I always said that even when he joined, if you go back and listen to our previous podcast, I always says he's a good coach. He knows what he's doing with the players. My only criticism of him was, is he a national team coach? And that was my only worry. Was he able to take the extra steps that a national team coach has to take? You know, so we'll still have to find out. It's still very early on. He's won all his matches, so we'll give him his credit. You know, I've been much more impressed with the performance in the second half against Bahrain. We'll see how he does against Iraq. I think that's a massive game. I hope we win. I think we will win. You know, I, I, I think that Tarami and Osmond, once they get their, their, their foot in the uh, on the on the goal sheet, they they can score goals. It's all about consistency for them. So hopefully that does happen against Iraq. Okay, we're gonna hear some fan reaction from Arya very popular on Twitter, goes by the name of 29 United. So we're going to go to that just now. Okay, I'm joined by Arya from 29 United on Twitter and YouTube. Arya, how you doing, man? I'm, I'm doing well. What about you, bro? All good, all good. Glad to have you on. Uh, I've been on your uh, YouTube channel a few times. Can you just give me a little bit of information about yourself, about your, your own social media? Yeah, I mean, I'm on Twitter. As I already said, at 29 United, I just tweet about Bayern and Kai Havers, my favorite player. Uh, and also Team Lee, of course. Nothing nothing really big. As for YouTube, I just do random videos, gaming videos, mostly FIFA and football videos as well. So, um, yeah, it would be really appreciated if you can check that out. Yeah, for sure. And we'll, we'll put all the links in the description down below so you can check them out. Uh, Arya, I want to ask you about the game last night, Iran versus Bahrain. Uh, just give me your thoughts on the match itself. Uh, how do you think it went for you? If I'm being honest, I think I'm going to have the general opinion here. The first half was not great. 
um, it wasn't a, it wasn't a good half. But uh, we kept on spamming crosses, and the delivery went to absolutely no one. So that's something that I guess the team has to improve on. However, in the second half, uh, I guess we all saw what the old team Mildi back in the 2018 qualifiers started doing. It was it was great. Um, we had a Twitter space together, uh, and I told you that the attack has to step up. Osmond and Toremi has to step up, which they did. I'm very happy they did. Osmond had a brilliant game, so did Toremi. The only concern I have for Toremi is he had a lot more shots, and he really needs to work on his finishing. I have a feeling if that was a Porto game, he would have put that in nine times out of ten times. Um, but, yeah, in general, it was great. It sucks to see Amiri out. I think he's out for the next two games, if I'm not mistaken. And he's a player that has received a lot of criticism in, in the past two games as well. Um, I think people are realizing that he's still very, very good. The lineup was very weird at first. Nur Lahi was starting and not Azoto Lahi. Um, and I guess it put it out to everyone. Uh, so I don't know what Skocic is really doing with the lineup. I'm honestly just happy we won. Uh, but I hope that's not going to be the lineup for the next two games. Yeah, and obviously, you know, ultimately we, we, we won the game. But um, you're talking about the lineup. So obviously the substitutes that came on, who who impressed you the most? Yeah, I mean, for sure, someone got dos as soon as he came in, changed the whole game, and I hope that shows the Skocic that he needs to now start uh, regularly. Uh, I hope he starts playing against Cambodia and against Iraq because I think he's going to be ultimately the game changer for sure. Yeah, and you know I think the last question I've got for you is. Um, how do you think now from this match Iran push forward into the next two games against Cambodia and, and Iraq? I mean, I'm not really worried about the Cambodia game. We smashed them 14-0 last time. And I honestly want another performance like that. I really hope we can go ahead and score plenty of goals against them. Iraq didn't do too well against Cambodia as well. What it was it? 4-1, 3-1? Cambodia scored against them, which is an important yeah, thing to note. Yeah, 4-1, I think it was. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I just want to go against ahead against Cambodia to smash them. Absolutely batter them. Um, I predict, what, 8-0, 9-0. I don't think it's going to be as bad as last time. And against Iraq, we just have to give it our, our everything because that's ultimately the most important game after the Bahrain one. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've heard that the two or three most important players are out, one of them due to COVID and one of them through injury. So that's, a, that's an advantage for us. And we just have to take advantage and win the game. Ultimately, I don't even care how much the scoreline is. I just want the win. And uh, I, I'm pretty confident. Pretty confident. Yeah, no, I mean, let's see. Let's see what happens. We've got two games that we have to win. So uh, I hope your predictions are right. Um, Arya, thanks for coming on. I appreciate your time. Uh, again, if you want to subscribe to to his channel and um, all the links down below in, this, in the description so check him out thanks for coming on thank you for having me bro so we heard from Arya he gave his um, reaction Arya I want to come to you uh, obviously on I believe let me bring up on Friday we have a match against Cambodia uh, a game that previously we beat them 14-0 in, in Ozadi. Uh, I think, yeah, I think as we said before uh, with Arya, he, we think they lost their game to Iraq four goals to one. So they actually scored a goal, which is a, an improvement, you know, and obviously it shows that they're actually, you know, doing something well. Uh, what are your thoughts on the game? How do you think it will go? And also, what lineup do you want to see? For the uh, Iran Cambodia game, I think uh, it's a good time to. It, I've obviously, the team should take it very seriously. I don't think that they should back down, not try, or decrease their momentum. We've won two games so far. Uh, it shouldn't be a time of really pausing our momentum and pausing our. Our, uh, our energy. We're, we're rolling. We need to keep rolling, though. Uh, specifically, for this game, I think that Skocic is going to keep up the same intensity. I think the lineup is going to be all starters. I don't see him putting or emphasizing the bench. Maybe he will do that earlier compared to... Maybe he'll make some first-half substitutions. But I think 
this game should be taken as seriously as the Bahrain sh- game should be. Um, if it if it's a blowout, then it's a blowout. But um, something that I noticed for the something that I'm hoping not hoping, but uh, something that I noticed for the score, in some ways, it was really on. I'm not uncomfortable. It was it was annoying to have to concede a goal against Hong Kong. Uh, I would have much preferred a 3-0 game, but in some ways, I'm glad that happened. Actually, uh, it gave the players something to be, something to give them a little edge to, something to tell them that all right, there's some things that they need to improve on, especially in the defensive end. And I really think that in practice they noticed that because uh, defense was more than average, pretty good against Bahrain. No serious chances were given. And now I'm not saying Cambodia, they should have let them score a goal, but I'm, my point is that they should take this game as seriously as they take the Bahrain game so they can hopefully take an easy win and carry that momentum into the Bah into the excuse me, Iraq game for to finish this four game stint uh as accurately as they can. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um and when it comes to Pejmon, your thoughts on the game what's your what your what your predictions you know i mean i know aria you're saying that you know it could be quite an easy game but i don't know i I think that he might play his his bench players i think there's a chance that he might go and he might play the likes of torah b and gaia d for example what do you think pejman i don't agree with with aria uh of course the game should be taken seriously but at the same time you have to be smart I mean, uh, Cambodia is one of the weakest national teams in Asia. And that's <laughs> maybe one of the weakest continents ever, you know. Um, although they got like one point against Hong Kong, which is really good for them. The Iranian bench should, because this is, it would be four games in 12 days. And a couple of players already have some yellow cards. I think Kandani, which I also believe is a good yeah, player. Yeah, Sardar one as well. Oh, yeah, he, he, he's been uh, decent. Uh, he's dangerous uh, on corners. I think uh, he, he should start, you know. Uh, the, the game, I guess, Iraq, I'm talking about. He's good enough to, to be in the starting lineup. Maybe with, with Pro Ganji, I don't know. Uh, but Kanoni and Osmoon and even Hodge Safi um, should should rest because they'll have yellow cards. And one more player, was it Amiri, who's, who's maybe injured anyway. Um, yeah. And let's other players that need need some uh, playing time because there will be a lot of Iran games, national team games in in the fall if you want to advance to the next group, which they probably will. Uh, so we don't need to see Mehdi and uh, Sardar, you know, uh, killing it against uh, Cambodia now that the goal difference against that team doesn't me- matter anyway. Uh, Karim Ansari Fard. Mehdi Qaidi, Al Reza Jahan Bakhsh, Saman Qudus. I mean, Kaver Rezaei, uh, even Majid Hosseini, Murtaza Pulad Ganji. Come on, those names are amazing. And they can even play against Iraq too. That's how good of a bench Iran has. So yeah. let those players play against uh, Cambodia, is my opinion. The, I think the, the the most important thing for Skocic is that he doesn't lose the changing room. For him, he has to make sure that he, all the players have his trust. And by doing the only way you can do that really as a coach is by playing your players, you know, and giving them a chance to prove themselves. If there's a game against Cambodia, and we've like you said, Pejman, very rightly, there's four games this month. You know, the players have just come off a very long season, uh, club season. They need the rest. They had, you know, two tough games against, two tough games, you know, in, on a bad pitch against Hong Kong and in a, a very stressful game against Bahrain. So we need the players to rest. Osmond obviously can't be risked for his yellow card. Injuries, we can't risk injuries. And you want your players to be have a high morale. So... The likes of, as you mentioned, the likes of Kovar Rizal, Yan Sarifar, Koya Di, Torabi, you want to give these guys a chance to play. So I, I, I disagree with Arya as well. I do think that we will play a slightly weaker team. Weaker in, in, you know, in quotation marks. I don't think it's going to be a weak team. I think we'll still have a strong team. And 
you could also maybe see the likes of um, Daniel Esmaili Farr making his debut at right back. You know, Moharami has been out for a long time. He needs a rest as well. So maybe we see Daniel Esmaili Farr right back. Maybe you see someone like Jafar Salmoni. Uh, so it's a good chance to give these guys a chance to play. Um, however, my pred- if I was to give my prediction, uh, I think this game will be a much, much lower scoring game than the one against Cambodia the first time. I think we'll probably win like 8 or 9 now. Uh, but we'll see, you know, we'll see definitely. I think it's an important chance uh, for the players to just get some continuity, not not within the, the starting players, but just within the players who haven't been playing. What are your predictions then, uh, Arya? Yeah, I agree with you that it's definitely going to be lower scoring. I was thinking 6-0. Uh, I could see probably four goals in the first half and then uh, one really early goal and one really late goal in the second half. So uh, 6-0 would be my uh, ultimate uh, prediction. Peggy? 14-0 again. <laughs> you know what? I, I'd take it. I'd take it at this point. Um, all right. So we've got some fan questions uh, from the people who sent us over on Twitter and also Instagram. Okay. First fan question comes from Persian Wall. Twitter, he asks, are you more confident that we could possibly top the group? I, I said it from, from the... I'm sure this is in some part somewhere. I said from the beginning when we lost those two games that Iran will not only qualify, they will win the group. And I'm, I'm sticking by that. Yeah, I hope so. I really hope so. I, I really believe that the this win against Bahrain has, has put us in the right situation to go into that in, into the Iraq game. Arya, do you think we'll win the group? Absolutely, yeah. They uh, they prove that they can handle do or die situations in the Bahrain game, and I'm sure they'll do the same in the Iraq game. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, next question comes from to handle is SN007007. He asks uh, Iraq team situation, any major injuries? Do you guys have any information on that? I think Arya actually gave us some information on that on his segment. I th- I don't believe they have any major injuries. Uh, the only one I can think of that they're, they're missing is their midfielder um, Rashid. Uh, so, you know, that he's one of their best players. I don't think they're missing anyone else, if I'm not mistaken. Next question comes from Instagram from Amir Maynard. He asks, uh, what do you think about the lack of uh, Am- Bayed Amiri uh, in the next two games? How much will it affect the game's flow? Personally, I think Amiri is very important to the team. You know, maybe he's not, not the most technically skilled player. But he brings the energy that you need in the team, you know. So you know, I think it's very important. It's a shame. It would be a big shame if we miss him, in my opinion. Okay, he had a couple of good games, but uh, I think Iran can do pretty good without Amiri as well. Uh, we have some good enough yeah. uh, substitution substitutes for for Amiri, so it's okay. But it would be worse if we had maybe Tarami or Osmun or all these other off to be honest yeah i mean i really hope uh he makes it for the iraq game but uh if not then uh then this is a team with good substitutions so i think we should be fine for sure all right i really appreciate everyone's time today again i want to say that we will have a, a twitter space before the match against cambodia other than that guys follow us on twitter instagram facebook subscribe to us on youtube soundcloud spotify itunes Google Podcast, and we're also now on Amazon Music. You can also visit our website at globalzampodcast.com and we'll see you very, very soon for our post-match analysis of Iran versus Cambodia. Thank you for listening. Hey, this is Arash Markazi from ESPN and you're listening to Golbezat, your one-stop shop for all your Iranian soccer news.